Hi Year 4 and welcome to today's Reading for Pleasure. We're going to read chapter 3 now of Roman Invasion. The next day I was taken from the room where they kept my mother, Aethne and me and brought out into the courtyard of the fort. The chains had been taken off me but my wrists were tied together with thick rope and a noose had been fixed around my neck. One of the Roman soldiers held the other end of the rope as if I were a horse on a lead. The soldier gave a sharp tug and I stumbled forward into the daylight of the fort. Before, I'd only seen the Roman fort from outside. It was a massive building on the top of the hill with high walls made of timber and turf, a watchtower at each corner and smaller towers set along the tops of the walls. When I'd been brought in with my mother and the others after the battle with the Romans, I'd been unconscious, so I hadn't seen anything of the inside of the fort except the room where I woke up and the large room where the Roman governor had addressed us. Now, finally, I so saw the Roman fort from the inside. The large buildings in the centre weren't round and made of wood and turf as the buildings of our tribe were. They were long and square and made of cloth and leather. I had heard people speaking of these buildings and saying that the Romans called them tents. They had a sloping roof made out of what looked like animal skins stretched over a long wooden pole and then fixed to the ground with ropes. There were hundreds of these tents. Everyone inside the fort seemed to be working, either sharpening their swords and spears or mending something. In one area, not far away from me, a group of soldiers were training, practising fighting one another. I stopped to watch, but the soldier tugged again on the rope around my neck and I was jerked forwards towards the gate of the fort, where an enormous line of soldiers was standing to attention, ready to leave. I stopped, stunned by the sight of so many men. There were thousands of them, all fully armed and carrying heavy packs on their back. I had expected we would be accompanied by a troop of 20 or 30 at most, but this huge number left me breathless. High above the column, banners and flags of different colours flew. In the middle of the column, a silver eagle was held high on a pole. The soldier leading me saw the stunned expression on my face and gave a grin. The power of the Roman army, boy, he said. A Roman legion, 5,000 of the bravest and toughest warriors the world has ever seen. I recovered my surprise and gave him a glare. We Britons have bigger armies than this Roman. We have hundreds of thousands of warriors, but we do not feel the need to put on a show like this. I only stared because I have never seen so many men dressed up like puppets pretending to be warriors. A real warrior goes into battle naked and unafraid, not hiding behind a suit made of metal like a coward. The soldier's face hardened and he raised his hand as if to strike me. But another soldier gave a sharp cough to stop him and said quietly so as not to be heard. Leave him till later, Simeon. Don't want to get into trouble for striking a prisoner, especially a prince. Simeon stopped his hand and glared at me for a moment as if undecided about what to do. Then he brought his hand down and rubbed his cheek with it and nodded. You're right, Asras, he said. I'll deal with him later when we're on the road. For now, let's dump this rubbish in the cart. He pulled me to the cart that was about halfway along the line. I saw that there were other large wagons at the end of the line piled with equipment but the cart they were pulling me to was small, with a large old mare between its shafts, the big shaggy sort of horse that was used to pull logs and heavy loads, rather than lighter, more spirited horses that pulled our chariots. Sitting on the seat of the cart was a man in a short robe, with a boy of about my age next to him. The two soldiers lifted me up and then tossed me onto the back of the cart. It was filled with wooden stakes, and I banged my knee as I hit them, but I was determined not to cry out or let them see they'd hurt me. Simeon clambered up and began to tie me to the rails at the side of the cart. Just so you don't get any ideas about running away, said Simeon as he got down from the cart. And then he and Asras joined the column of soldiers behind it. The man in the driving seat and the boy beside him turned to look at me. The man gave a smile. Welcome, young warrior, he said. My name 
is Pentheus, and this is my nephew, Talos, my assistant. We are the surveyors for the road. I scowled back at them and turned my face away to let them know I wanted nothing to do with them. They were Romans, and Romans were my enemy. I looked towards the room where my mother and Aethne were still being kept prisoner, but there was no sign of them. The Romans were obviously keeping them under tight guard. Anyway, we said our goodbyes already this morning when the soldiers had come for me. The goddess will be on your journey with you, protecting you, my son, my mother had said. Be brave and proud. We had hugged tightly just in case it was the last time we should see one another. Then I had saluted her as my queen, as well as my mother. I kissed Aethne gently and allowed the soldiers to put the rope round my neck and take me out. There was a shout from somewhere at the front of the line, which was repeated past us down the line of soldiers. And suddenly the soldiers began stamping their feet in time, marching on the spot. The sound of 5,000 pairs of heavy metal soled boots crashing onto the earth was incredible. The soldier who had shouted out first was obviously in charge of the whole legion. I felt the cart give a lurch and realised the man, Pentheus, had prodded the horse into moving. The line of soldiers moved forward, with our cart trundling along in its middle. The two large gates of the entrance swung open, and we left the fort and moved out into the open country, heading east. We were on our way. Chapter 4 tomorrow. Bye.